That was the Prime Minister just moments ago announcing big changes in the federal carbon price policy, including a three-year pause on the carbon tax on home heating oil, doubling the rural carbon tax rebate and incentives to install home heat pumps. For more on the decision and what's behind it, Atlantic Cabinet Minister Seamus O'Regan is with us live in studio. Hi, Minister. Good to see you. Thank good you for making you, the Minister. time. Thank you. Uh, the premiers of these provinces, I know you're going to be as familiar as our viewers with, with this fact, have been calling on your government mm -hmm. to make these changes since at the latest June, I mean, even months before that. How should or how would Canadians read this as anything different than your government just responding to falling poll numbers? No, it's not. It's, it's actually, look, if you believe in affordability and you believe in, in tackling emissions, then you have to have buy-in from people. And the fact is, to get people to heat pumps, you're looking at a 24 grand startup cost. Nobody's got 24 grand. Very few people do. Right, so we had a problem. We knew we had a problem, and and you know the, the premier's voice, more importantly to me, my constituents did same constituents, and they were to all the MPs uh, in Atlanta, Canada. It was very clear that this had become an obstruction. So you got to go with it. Like you know, you, you got to. At the end of the day, what matters to me isn't some sort of any, you know any some sort of consistency for the sake of consistency. The goal here isn't consistency in the price on pollution. The goal is to get people to lower emissions and to get more people to buy into it. The only way you can do that is if you tackle affordability. That was a problem here. Then why was your government so married to the consistency? Because again, I remember conducting interviews with various constituents in those provinces, with the premiers as well, even speaking to MPs from there, all of whom were saying the same thing in advance of the imposition of the carbon tax on July 1st. Why wasn't the analysis that your government is now able to do done prior to penalizing Atlantic Canada, Canada with that carbon tax? At the Nobody point? ever said that things in this city happen quickly. I mean, it takes time, and it takes time to put forward, you know, a good measured argument. We, we, I think we got this, I think we got it quite right, actually, to be honest with you, because you look at we're, we're, people who are below the median income, family household income, they're going to get a free heat pump. The people who aren't, we're going to work out an interest rate plan for them to pay it off, and a lot of them are going to pay it off through the savings. I mean, I, I did that for myself because I switched to an electric furnace before the heat pump, but even moving from home heating oil to an electric furnace, we're saving hundreds and hundreds of dollars every month. So there's going to be huge cost savings here as well. And, you know, just to characterize it, because I think a lot of people in central Canada don't, they're not as familiar with home heating oil. But, I mean, to see this kind of 1950s-style truck coming up and down the road and, and, you know, putting it into people's houses or the tank behind people's houses is not something that in other parts of Canada they're very familiar with. It's only about 4 percent in the rest of the country. It's half the homes in PEI. It's 36 percent in Nova Scotia. It's 22 percent in Newfoundland and Labrador. So this is a big portion of our population. We want them to save money. We want to move them to heat pumps. We figure we can do do this at least a critical mass within three years. So we're giving it that long and then, you know, we go back to it and people will still realize the same savings. And again, I would just say as you're rattling off those statistics, Canadians actually in central Canada might be more familiar than you think with them only because, again, the constituents of your province and those other Atlantic provinces have been saying that for a long time, have been trying to inform your government for a long time. And I'm going to present to you some numbers here just to further challenge you on the notion that this is more bending to political pressure than actually pursuing a policy you could have months before. David Coletto with Abacus Data conducted polls throughout the rest of the country, throughout the entire country, rather, I should say. In June of this year, your party was polling at 36 percent, the Conservatives at 32. As of September, two months after that federal carbon tax had been imposed, the Conservatives were polling at 43 percent, the Liberals at 30 percent. Again, do you, do you see how easy it would be for Canadians to think this is just your party and your government folding to what has happened as a result of the imposition of this policy. Or it's democracy working and we listen to our constituents. Like, you know, there's, there's two ways of looking at it. I prefer the latter because that's exactly what happened. You know, I spent the summer at home and people were like, this, this is happening and I'm worried and I'm very anxious about how the fall is going to happen, right? I mean, people don't use home heating oil as much in the summer. What's really interesting too, and this is something that, you know, in St. John's where I live, what we found is we actually need air conditioning in the summer. Like, I've had the same house now for nine years. We actually need air conditioning in St. John's in summer like that's that's happening so people realize that and the nice thing about heat pumps now is they'll have air conditioning with it as well so this is this is happening the, the price on heat pumps started happening now in fact we didn't want to waste any time once we arrived on a solution collectively the group of us and caucus really did lead this i have to say we didn't want to waste any time because uh, this will take effect two weeks from today people are still starting to fill up their tanks now i want them to save money now the other part of this though is a doubling of the rebate for rural, rural canadians and in that instance 
again, that is something I can think back years interviewing politicians, particularly in two provinces where the Liberals don't have a lot of seats, Alberta and Saskatchewan, who have been saying the same thing. This is disproportionately impacting our people who live in rural areas because the alternatives are not there, yeah. right? Yeah. This is disproportionately affecting farmers in our provinces. This is, and we're talking years, again, it may be democracy at work, but is it democracy that favors a vote-rich area for liberals or, or, or something different? No, no, no. I mean, look, so what we're doing is we're starting in Atlanta, Canada, and then we're looking at what we can roll out across the rest of the country where it makes sense. And I think that should, that should be the way it is. It should, you know, we're, we're a practical bunch out in Atlanta, Canada, but I think the Liberal Party as well, you know, when confronted with a problem, you've you got to move around it. We have to be results-oriented here. The results that we want here are energy efficiency, lowering emissions, and by definition, if you do that, you should be saving people money. And if you've got a big $24,000 boulder in front of it, move the boulder. So the, the overall uh, ask around the policy of the carbon price or, or the carbon tax has often been in the vein of affordability, right? Like the pushback has been not just in Atlantic Canada mm. on this one specific part when it comes to home heating oil, but for example, on the price of gas going up, that the alternatives, much like with those heating pumps, mm -hmm are not cheap to come by nor readily available. In this case, for example, electric vehicles. Do you think your party, your government, has been blinded by your ideological sort of marriage to this proposal and as a result negatively impacted the cost of living for Canadians? No, you just, you know, you listen, you work at it, you try and get it right. Atlantic Caucus made it very clear, you know, to the Prime Minister and to, and to Cabinet that, look, this is real, this is happening, this is what we heard over the summer. Uh, you know, we got together, uh, you know, at the end of the summer, we talked it through, and then we started working on solutions. I mean, I, you know, the timeline is, is really just that, and I think it's worked exactly as we hoped it would. I mean, the solutions that we've arrived at, I think, are very, very practical and are aimed at getting people to save money. And the price on pollution holds. I mean, people will still get the rebate. I mean, if you talk, any major economist around the world all agrees that the price on pollution is the way to go about it because it's market friendly and it incents behavior. And if we can do that right, we lower emissions. But you can't be dogmatic about it. And but you have been dogmatic. Your government has been dogmatic until today. This is the first time your government has blinked. Well, here we are. And, you know, we had a problem and now we're trying to find a way around it. And, and I think that we've arrived at the right solution. D does that leave open the possibility, for example, of uh, the fuel regulations that the Atlantic premiers also wrote a letter to your government? Like, more augmentation in the future if, as you put it, you know, practicality meets dogmatism. Yeah, there's, look, there's a, a, it's not dogmatic. I mean, the price on pollution was always about affordability. It was always about a system that would work with the market and would change behavior and incent good behavior. I think you're quite right to point out in some instances where people don't have a choice, you know, what can we do to rectify that? I think we just have to be practical about it. Um, I think this is, you know, an example of just a practical solution to a very real problem. $24,000, you know, to get people to move from home heating oil to a heat pump is beyond most people. And so if we can, if we can make sure that we have mechanisms in place so that they get that for free or they can, you know, pay it off interest free and we can get rid of that upfront cost and we buy some time, you know, we're thinking three years to allow that to happen and to roll out, that's just common sense. And are you certain and have you received an opinion to this effect that that will not overall undermine the climate policy's original goal, which is, of course, to reduce emissions by a certain oh. amount. Because when I've interviewed the environment minister on this exact subject and put to him the idea of some kind of pause because of affordability, his response has, in fact, been that it can't happen because those objectives are so important and they can't be jeopardized. Are you sure this doesn't jeopardize this? Heat pump can be two, three, five times more efficient. Uh, than a home heating oil or a gas furnace. But in the interim, you're going three years without any carbon tax on that. And you've been telling us, not you, but the government's yeah. been telling us that that carbon tax is what's necessary in order to achieve our climate objectives. Right, but that's if you don't have any major upfront costs, like a $24,000 would cost for a heat pump, right? And we know the heat pumps are like, like I said, two, three, five times more efficient depending on the type of furnace that you have. If we can get rid of that goal, we get a critical mass of people in Atlantic Canada to switch from home heating oil by making it that easy. And it can be that easy. I mean, in PEI, we're working with the province and the utility there. There, people, you know, people are showing up at, the, at your door and saying, "Just sign here. We'll make it all very easy for you, and you will start saving money." That is what we want people to do. And if they have heat pumps, they will start to save money. Plus, they'll have AC in the summer, which we never thought we'd ever need in St. John's, Newfoundland, in the evenings. Let me tell you, like this is so this is real and it's Though, and I get your point on the affordability aspect of it, and the fact that in three years, if they all have heat pumps, that's going to make a discernible big, difference. Big. But are you saying that the decisions that you've made today, the reprieve that you're offering a number of Canadians, including many rural ones, is not going to impact in any way 
the overall objectives that you set out very specifically to reduce emissions? I think it will have a huge effect in three years' time when we have a critical mass of people in Atlanta, Canada who have switched from home heating oil, which is far more polluting uh, than heat pumps and will save people a lot more money. And this gives us the opportunity to do that. The point is not, at the end of the day, you know, scoring political points because you're consistent on this or whatever. The point has always been and should always be we need to get people to start, start lowering emissions, even in the residential and domestic use, because all of that adds up to a lot. And if we can do that by making it affordable for people and getting rid of the upfront cost, we're off to the races. Pierre Polyev wrote after this announcement, after plummeting in the polls, a flailing desperate Trudeau is now flipping and flopping on the carbon tax as I'm holding a gigantic axe, the tax rally, in a liberal-held Atlantic riding. He is admitting he's not worth the cost. The Conservatives have focused their message on axing the tax. Mr. Polyev has been in Atlantic Canada. How much of that informed this decision? You want to talk about ideology. He's been at this for 20-plus years. I mean, clutch my pearls. I wouldn't expect anything else from him. I mean, come on. Um, I, you know... God bless him, but you know he's not going to budge on this. I know that we have we have listened to people, we have responded, and I think we've come up with a smart plan that ultimately lowers emissions and makes it more affordable for people to do that. People and his in ascent Canada, in the polls in Atlantic Canada, though, you're telling me, has nothing to do with that. No, what, people, listen, we're listening to our constituents, you know, and when, and when they're not happy, when they're not happy with their government. You know, when, when a pollster calls them, they may react in a different way and in a way that I'm not happy with, but in a way that's real. You know, you have to listen to people. I've, I listen to my constituents. I know what they're saying. And I, you know, and I live there. And I get the bill myself. So I know. And what they were saying, you know, was making sense. So we had to find a solution.